Hey guys, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another video. In this one, I wanted to take a look at some of the new Throne of Eldraine cards. And I was going through all the cards, and I wound up selecting all the ones that I thought were pretty good. And I was like, oh my gosh, there are just way too many for me to make one video. That video would take forever. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and split this into two parts. The first part is going to be the exclusive cards and how to get them. And the second part is going to be the non-exclusive cards and what are some cards that you should be chasing, right? So before we get into that, it's important that you know what the new mechanics are. So they released what they're all gonna do today. And so let's take a look, right? So we've got five new mechanics in the set and they are gonna be adventure, adamant, food, mill, and resourceful. Adventure is actually a pretty cool ability. I really like the way that they're implementing it. So an adventure card is a creature that has also a spell attached to it, right? So in Paper Magic, you could either cast the spell, and when you do, that spell is exiled, and then you could cast the creature from exile, or you could just cast the creature and you'd never be able to use the adventure spell effect. So in this one, you can cast the creature if you'd like, or there's a flip side to the card. So you can flip it, you can cast the spell, and once you do, then it is returned to your hand and you can only cast the creature portion. So you still get the adventure portion and you get the creature portion. So that's that's really cool. Adamant color is going to be, I think, really easy to trigger. So adamant is going to be if you match three or more gems of the color of the card that it's specifying for adamant, then you get to trigger the adamant ability. Food, I thought, would be trash, but there are actually some really cool food cards, and I'm excited to get deck building around the food mechanic. So food is going to create tokens that are artifact supports with one shield. They're not going to be reinforced, so they're not quite like treasures. They're more like servo tokens, and whenever you destroy or match the support gem, you gain three life. There are a lot of things that are going to sack food, and so that'll still count to the life gain. Then we've got Mill, and Mill is an ability that will be active as long as there are X or more cards in your opponent's graveyard. And there's a whole bunch of cards that are going to be putting cards in your opponent's graveyard. So if you've had a chance to look through the set, and you've seen all these things that are like, put a bunch of cards in your opponent's graveyard, and you're like, why would I ever do that? That just gives my opponents more cards to play with. It's so that you can trigger Mill. And then resourceful, I think this is actually a potentially really cool mechanic. It's one of those where we're going to have to play with it and find out, but it looks really cool. So whenever you draw a card, if that card is not the first card you drew this turn, trigger this effect. And then the cards that have resourceful have like resourceful 2 or resourceful 3 or 4. And so when it says this happens up to X times per turn, it can happen three times in a turn if you draw like four total cards, right? Um, so that's a really cool ability too. And now let's get into how you get the exclusives, right? So what are they? How do you get them? So there are five mythic exclusives. They're going to be these five here. So we've got Alela, we've got Chulain, we've got Korvald, we've got Sir Gwyn, and we've got Kenrith. This is guesswork here, but I'm going to guess that these are the five that are going to be for money. The only one that maybe won't be is Kenrith. Maybe it'll be tied to an event, but I honestly think that we're going to get five for money. And then we're going to have 14 rares. So we've got the Mammoth Elephant and the Hydra and the Witch and Taste of Death, Workshop Elders, Fairy Formation, Shimmer Dragon, Happily Ever After, and Mace of the Valiant. No, nope, there's multicolored ones too. Who am I kidding? So we've got Silverwing Squadron, which is still monocolored. We've got Banish into Fable, Fabero Elder, Gluttonous Troll, and Knight's Charge. Don't worry, we're going to go over all these. Fear not. Now, if you take a look at what you've got here, right? So we've got those 14... Um, between monocolor and multicolor, four are multicolor, the rest are monocolor. Interestingly, none of the monocolored ones are red. But anyways, so for the new events, we've got the great tournament. You'll see that there are five nodes, recharge time, eight hours. Um, I'm gonna guess that we're gonna get maybe some of them 
from Great Tournament. Maybe not, you know, it's a, it's a coalition event, but we'll see. We've got Challenge of the Courts. There's five versions. That's almost assuredly going to mean that we get five, at least five of those rare ones from this. And then we've got Fables of Eldraine, and that's got 12 chapters. My guess is that we're probably going to maybe get the multicolored ones from this, sort of like how M20 gave us those packs that would give us one of four rares. Um, maybe it's five? It's four or five, right? So it'll be just like that, where you just get them until you get all of them, right? So let's take a look first at the Mythics, see which ones are maybe worth buying or, you know, uh, which ones are, are you going to look forward to playing with, and then get into the rares. So... To start with, we've got Alayla, and I think that Alayla is maybe going to be the strongest one, potentially. So this one is a 6-5 flyer. I'm saying it's a 6-5 flyer, even though it says 4-5, because while this creature's on the battlefield, all your creatures with flying get plus 2, plus 0. So that 4 is going to boost to 6, because Alayla is flying. And then whenever an artifact or enchantment support enters the battlefield under your control or gains a shield, create a fairy token. Once again, guesswork, fairy tokens are probably going to be 1-1 one, one flyers. There's a bunch of things that you'll see that are going to create fairy tokens. And so my guess is that we're going to get those fairies. And since it's artifact or enchantment support, that means that if you create food tokens, you're going to get fairies. If you create servos, you're going to get fairies. So really anything that's even like a support token, let's say you're using uh, the Sahili Vanguard, you're going to get a bunch of fairies. So this one has a chance to make a whole bunch of little fairies that will add up and actually be kind of strong along with Alayla. So Alayla also has lifelink and death touch. The lifelink is the more appealing of the two, um, but she actually looks pretty cool. I like her. So yeah, if you wanted, if, if you wanted to buy one, she's one that's actually going to be pretty decent. I'll go ahead and throw in that none of the for purchase cards this time like blow me away in the sense that like you're just going to immediately win the game for playing them. So like Udvara Hellkite, like it, that card just wins. Um, all of these really just seem more like they're really fun cards. So I see fun uses for all of them. So yeah, that, that's up to you. So we got Chulane. Chulane, Teller of Tales. Chulane, I really don't like that he has Vigilance. So he's got a 4-6... Um, power toughness, which is only six toughness with vigilance, which is going to make it hard for him to maybe stay alive. And Chu Lane says that whenever you cast a card with adventure, you draw a card. I'm hoping that that means that when you cast the back half, you draw a card, and when you cast the front half, you draw a card. So both the spell and the creature. So each adventure turns into draw two cards. And then, so whenever you cast that adventure, you draw the card, then the first land card in your hand gains 8 mana. So that's going to help you get a whole bunch of lands down. You can use removal adventures to charge up lands, which is really cool. And then if a creature you control would die, return it to your hand, disable it until the beginning of your next turn, and it gains half of its mana. The disable it is just to make it so that you don't kill off your creatures and find some infinite feedback loop to get them all back into play. But in this case... For Chulane, I imagine that it will only be really decent if that if a creature you control would die, return it to your hand, is going to happen when Chulane dies. Because Chulane's going to die really, really easily with that 6 toughness. So Chulane, we'll just have to wait and see how he works before I can tell you, like, oh yeah, this one's worth it or not, yeah. Corvold looks more like a really sort of fun gimmicky card. It's going to pair well with Mirror March. And so let's sort of get into what Corvold does. So 16 for a 6-6 six, six flying. Whenever this creature attacks or enters the battlefield, destroy a support token you control. Now, it's not support card. It has to be a token. So something like a servo or a food or something like that. If you can't, lose a creature card reinforcement. Now, I'm kind of wondering what happens if you have neither of those things, right? So when it attacks or enters the battlefield, what if you don't have a support or a creature reinforcement? Right? Does it just like fizzle or does he sacrifice himself or something? I know it doesn't say that he sacrifices himself, but I'm just curious how the game is going to run this card. And then whenever a token you control is destroyed or you lose a card reinforcement, this creature gets plus two, plus two, and you draw a card. So this dude's going to work really well with food because as the food tokens get destroyed, you are going to draw cards for each of the food tokens that gets destroyed. And this dude is going to get plus two, plus two for each of those food tokens destroyed. Furthermore, if you use Mirror March and you attack with this dude or really anything else that comes into play, when at the end of the turn, if somehow by miraculous effect the opponent survives the Mirror Match swing, 
this guy is going to buff up really big, right? So for every one of the reinforcements, this dude's going to get plus two, plus two. So this card looks really cool, both with Mirror March and with the food mechanic. Like I said, there's a bunch of really cool looking food cards, so this one might be decent, right? It could maybe even de be decent in Oko, right? Because Oko's uh, ability for six loyalty is going to make three food. So, and Oko is green. This guy has green in him. So yeah, maybe he'll be pretty good. Don't know. Definitely looks fun. We've got Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale. I kind of feel like this one's the weakest of them, um, or at the very least has the least potential of them. But yeah, let's take a look at them. 16 for a 6-6, six, six. Vigilance. I don't like the Vigilance on this guy for the same reason as with Chulane. And then whenever a creature you control attacks, if it's buffed, you draw a card and lose two life. I mean, you're losing life, doesn't have life gain. It's only one card, so not, not super great. And then at the end of your turn, each equipment in your hand gains three mana for each knight you control. I get that it's trying to push equipment on you, but there's definitely better ways of getting equipment out than this, so not super fond of it. And then finally for the mythics, we've got Kenrith, the Returned King. This card is actually pretty cool. It's going to change its effects a little bit based on what else you use alongside it. So Kenrith is a 7-7 seven, seven for 19, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, Perform the following effects for each color among cards you control. And if you have all five colors, you're going to get all of these abilities every turn. Now, as Kenrith is white, you're definitely going to be getting the gain five life. But then if you look down, you've got blue is going to draw you a card. I mean, that's mediocre. It's not bad. Black is a really cool one. Black is going to return the first creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if you use this dude with uh, Deathbridge Chant, that's going to be two creatures coming back every turn. And then there's a new card in the set that's going to be bringing cards back from your graveyard apart from Kenrith every turn. And so you could potentially be getting three creatures back from your graveyard every single turn with, with Kenrith. So that's that's pretty cool. Although it would require you to use white-black, so you'd have to be running Kaya, Sorin, or Karn. I suppose there's also the Eldrazi, Ted, right? But um, yeah, no, not worth that one. Red, your creatures gain haste and first strike until end of turn. I mean, that's kind of cool in that all your creatures just indefinitely get haste and first strike as long as you got a red good up. And then green, your first creature gets a permanent plus two, plus two buff. So Kenrith could be pretty strong, actually, but you definitely would have to build around him. And so, yeah, so as, as, as the different mythics go, I think they all look cool, except for this one right here. I, I would skip this one, but the other four look pretty fun. I'm, I'm excited to try them out. I'll probably be waiting for them to come out for the booster crafting orbs because for me, I like to get the VIP once per per set. But um, And then at the end of the set, I try and booster craft the different mythics. But yeah, they all look really cool to me. So if you decide that you're able to get them, I think you'll have a lot of fun with them. Now for the rares. The rares, I love how many there are and I love the general power level of them because it's going to make it a lot easier for newer players to come in and get some cards that are very useful and playable and throw them into decks. And even for players that have more extensive collections, there are a few cool ones and little diamonds in here that you can try out too. So Thorn Mammoth is 18 for a 9-9. That's a pretty decent body. It's got Trample and Berserker. And when this creature or another creature you control enters the battlefield, this creature fights your opponent's first creature. So unfortunately, between Berserker and Fight, your Mammoth probably isn't going to stay alive super long. But on the plus side, this thing is going to be wiping your opponent's board. So that's pretty cool. If you have it fight and then it Berserker attacks something, you may lose the Mammoth, but you're going to get a two for one trade. So this is a pretty darn good card for a newer player, definitely, right? Steelbane Hydra, I'm not as fond of. So this is 9, but realistically 13 because of the stored mana for a 2-2, two -two, or more realistically 6-6. Six -six. And then activate 2 green to drain 6 mana from your hand, and then an opposing artifact or enchantment support loses 3 shields, and this creature gets a permanent plus 3, plus 3. I like that this thing gets permanent buffs and can become a lot bigger. I don't like that you're draining mana from your hand. So that draining 6 mana... Like, what if your opponent doesn't have an artifact or enchantment? Do you still drain the six? Do you still get the plus three, plus three? So, I mean, there's some questions around this card, but I'm not as fond of that one. For the black ones, we've got Chittering Witch. It's going to be really hard to tell how good this is going to be until we know what the Rat Plague tokens exactly are. 
Are they supports? Are they creatures? I don't know. Um, but when this creature enters the battlefield, create X rat plague tokens. X is three plus the number of opposing creatures. So hopefully your opponent has zero creatures out if you're playing black, so you just get three of these tokens, but you never know. Whenever a rat you control deals damage to your opponent's planeswalker, lose a rat plague reinforcement, then the first opposing creature gets minus two, minus two. So you can use this to slowly whittle away at your opponent. Um, I don't think that minus two, minus two for hitting your opponent each turn with a rat is going to be enough to bring you back if you're behind and you play this and your opponent's got three creatures, but that's just me. Taste of Death is actually pretty useful. So this one's going to create X food tokens, then destroy all creatures. X is the number of creatures in play. So if your opponent is bursting out to the lead, you destroy all their creatures, and you get food tokens equal to the number of creatures out. You could also run cool creatures on your side that you don't care if they die, or you could even use this for losing creature objectives. So it's pretty decent all around. For blue, we've got workshop elders, and while this creature's on the battlefield, all of your artifact creatures gain flying. At the beginning of combat on your turn, your first other creature gains the artifact subtype and gets plus x plus x, and that's a permanent plus x plus x, where x is equal to your highest artifact support shield. I imagine that you could have some fun shenanigans with this, but it really just feels more like a win more ability, because if you've got a support out that's getting up to enough shields to make this really worth it, then... I feel like you're probably already winning and in pretty good position. That being said, it could be a fun card, but I don't think it's a great card. Fairy Formation. This one is going to be awesome for newer players. So it's 14 for a 6-5 flyer, which is, you know, decent. But the Activate 5 Blue to create a fairy token is fantastic, because if you're running a lot of gem converters, then you could be getting quite a few of those fairy tokens every single turn. You, you could probably easily be getting between two and four of them, and on a lucky turn you get five. So this is going to be a really powerful card for newer players, and I like it a lot. Shimmer Dragon, I want to love this card. I really do. So while you gain three or more artifact cards, this creature gains hexproof. It's 16 for a 6-7, and then at the end of your turn, draw X cards. X is the number of artifact supports you control. I like that part, but then each artifact support you control loses one shield. I don't like that part, right? So I like that this is going to help trigger that new ability for like when you draw more than one card in a turn, but I don't like that it destroys all your artifact supports. Happily Ever After is going to have one of our new mechanics in the set, and it remains to be seen if it's going to be viable or just completely downright busted. So with this support, when it enters the board, each player gains eight life and draws a card. Decent. And then at the beginning of your turn, if there are five or more colors among non-token cards you control and you have full life, you gain 30 loyalty. I know that this is sort of a win more, but like in PVE, right? If you've got Niv, Mizette, the Reborn, or whatever that five colored Niv is down, you're going to be getting 30 loyalty every turn, right? You just have some life gain in your deck and then you just go massive stompy stompy. You put this thing in like a Tamiyo deck, you're drawing six cards and giving yourself that crazy mana boost every single turn. So it's pretty nutty. You could throw it into Teferi, um, get that support token that he's got, and then just use that uh, draw four cards and gain an extra swap every turn. But yeah, Happily Ever After looks like it has the potential to be like a game-breaking, disgustingly good card. Mace of the Valiant. This is going to be an equipment. And it's going to have whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, this support gains two shield. While this support is on the board, your first creature gets plus X plus X, where X is this support's shield. I feel like this is mediocre, right? I mean, it's whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield. It does gain two shields, which is kind of nice, but I don't really see this being a game changer for people with big collections. If you're newer to the game, then and you're running like a sort of little weenie deck or a knight deck or something, this could honestly be kind of decent, especially given that there are a lot of cards that are going to be helping you with, um, what's this, equipments. But all in all, it's it's sort of like a middling card, right? Then we've got Silverwing Squadron. I think this one's pretty bad. This one's 19 mana for a 4-4 flyer, and whenever this creature attacks, create X knight tokens. Then this creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, X is 1 plus the number of opposing creatures. We've got Banish into Fable. 
I'm going to check something really fast. Cool. We've got Banish into Fable. When you cast this spell, if it's not a copy and you control an artifact, copy it. It gains full mana. When you cast this spell, if it's not a copy and you control an enchantment, copy it. It gains full mana. So if you've got an artifact down, you get another copy of it for free. If you've got an enchantment down, you get another copy of it, you get it for free. And then return an opposing non-land support to their hand, and then you create a knight token. This just does a whole bunch of stuff for you. It, it looks like it could thematically be kind of like a fun card for an artifact enchantment deck, and white and blue and paper magic definitely does a lot of artifact enchantment stuff. I'm not as fond on the idea of it being like copy and gain for full mana type of thing for this, just because it's more of like another win more card. But the, the bouncing a support definitely is useful. Creating a knight token could be nice for objectives where we're going to have to summon knights. So this could be a nice little thing to have in your back pocket. Faborough Elder is kind of cool. It has a new mechanic to the set for Vigilance that I really, really like, and I'm really glad that they've implemented it. So it's 12 for a 3-3, and this creature gains Vigilance while its toughness is greater than an opposing creature's power. So it's kind of like you get to choose to block. I mean, you don't get to choose, right? But like in, in Paper Magic, you would block something if you were going to kill it and if your creature was going to survive. And so with Fate, with Faborough Elder and with a few other cards in the set, they're going to do exactly that. So they're going to block things when you'd want to block them and kill them. And then when this creature enters the battlefield, it gets plus one, plus one for each color among non-token cards you control. I'm hoping that it counts itself for two colors to make it 12 for a 5-5 five, five at least. And then if you've got other things, it can buff up even more. The one draw, like downside to this card is that activate three gain for each color among non-token cards you control, convert one gem to that color. So I say that that's a downside just because if you have a bunch of colors that are not in your Planeswalkers colors because you're running multicolored cards, this could convert a bunch of gems to things that you don't want to convert gems to. So that could be a downside, but yeah. We've got Gluttonous Troll. This is going to be a food token card. It's 15 for a 6-6. Six, six. When it enters the battlefield, you create X food tokens. That X is probably going to be 1. Activate 3. Destroy a food token you control. Then this creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn. X is 1 plus the number of opposing creatures. Now that X is 1 plus the number of opposing creatures applies to all of the X parts of this card. And given that it destroys food but doesn't get a permanent buff, this is not a card you're going to want to use in a food token deck. It is, it is not good. And the last of our exclusives is Knight's Charge. This card is really, really cool. I like it a lot. So it's a 13 mana support. Whenever a knight creature you control attacks, your opponent loses two life and you gain two life. So if you've got all your knights out, then you're going to be hitting for an extra six and gaining six a turn but adamant white and black. So remember, adamant means if you match three white or three black, then at the beginning of combat on your turn, return all knight creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield under your control. Those creatures gain haste, then destroy the support. This card is awesome, right? I mean, you, you get all of your knights back from the graveyard. If you've got something that's dumping a bunch of creatures into your graveyard, then you can just have this bring them all back. And if you're using something like Starfield of Nyx or Karn Tokens, then you can just get this back and rinse, lather, repeat, and just be bringing a whole bunch of knights back from your graveyard. So I really like the flavor of this card, and I really like its general power level. So those are all of our exclusive cards for the set. Um, so you should get all the rares from playing the different events, and you'll probably want to play all those events anyways. And then as for the Mythics, you'll have to decide if you want to pay money or or not for them. I haven't had a chance to play with them yet. They're not out yet, so I don't know how good they'll be in play, but all of them except for the night one look really fun. So hopefully this was helpful for you, and hopefully I see you in the next one, and in that one that's where I'm going to be going over all of the non-exclusive cards that I think are worth chasing. So have a good one. Meow.